What's up everybody, this is Tom Bernacki and today I'm gonna to be talking about my number one favorite sleep aid. Now, hopefully if you're sleepy, that didn't scare you too much to the point where you can't get to sleep and you stay up all night. I didn't top 11 countdown on my 11 favorite supplements. Spoiler alert, melatonin's number one. I'm gonna do a deep dive on all the new research on melatonin. What's the dosages? What's the dangers? Is there addictions? Does it mess up your hormones? What's going on with the dreams? Is it safe to take every single day? We're going over all the research we're starting now. Over the last 20 years, melatonin is more popular than ever. Its use is skyrocketing in the developed world. It can help with alcohol. It can potentially help with cancer. It has studies on insomnia, which are very beneficial to get in your sleep. It can help children fall asleep, so not to keep those parents awake. It can help with Alzheimer's disease. There are a lot of benefits. Just look at the statistics since 2000. Alzheimer rates are going up dramatically as the major cause of death. People who sleep less than six hours every night, which for a large part of my career was me, it messes up your body in significant ways. The four major diseases, diabetes, heart disease, dementia, biomechanical issues, chronic pain, these are massive issues. So essentially, statistically, if you're sleeping less than six hours a day, you're gonna have blood sugar problems. So a lot of the patients watching here are diabetics. Number two, you're gonna have pain management problems. People who sleep less have higher inflammation, weaker immune systems, and very difficult time controlling pain. They're more likely to have depression. You're more likely to have joint inflammation, joint pain, osteoarthritis. Basically, they studied even fit athletic people who barely sleep, they had severe hormone imbalances. We're talking cortisol, which is your stress hormone. Hunger, so essentially people who didn't sleep much are more prone to eat. And not only that, if you don't sleep enough because your cortisol is high, your base blood level blood sugar is much higher. That means you're basically a diabetic because you're not sleeping. As a man, your testosterone is lower. You're gonna have a lot more blood problems. Muscle recovery. So you get less growth hormone, less testosterone, your muscles can't repair. So your plantar fasciitis, your back pain, your joint pain, your inflammation, you're not able to develop that tissue repair. So your plantar fasciitis, joint stiffness, post-surgical pain, like we're not talking like 5% increases, we're talking like double the pain. This is what I've seen personally with patients if they don't sleep the first night. I do my best to help them with this type of stuff, especially after COVID now, your immune function. During sleep, your body releases cytokines. This regulates the immune system. If you're not able to get that sleep, this is how important it is. Your risk of flu and health issues shoot up like a rocket, and this is proven in a lot of studies. We're talking your vascular disease as well, your heart health, your mental health, your brain function, your memory. The dramatic results that this yields is huge. I link a lot of studies. I actually have two great videos where I go over the best sleep techniques, the best sleep positions for your biomechanics. Melatonin is something that I love. This is my number one go-to. I recommend this to a lot of people that have a hard time sleeping. And virtually everyone gives me very positive feedback. I've had patients use it for almost every type of sleep problems. I would say 90 plus percent of the time, patients have a lot of success. It's fairly safe. Melatonin is a hormone in your brain. And what happens is when you go outside and the sun is shining, the blue light from the sun is called UV blue light. That essentially stimulates your melatonin levels to fall. So you're energetic when the sun's out. But at nighttime, your melatonin should start to rise again because your brain and your eyes are not sensing UVB blue light. But what happens is now with TVs, with cell phones, we're always getting that light. So our melatonin levels stay low. Not only do we have a hard time falling asleep, but we don't reach those deeper levels of sleep. And what happens is our quality of sleep is actually decreased. And the big secret with your brain is, your brain has to actually deflate all those toxic fluids inside of it. It has to recycle your brain and get it healthy for the next morning. The reason you feel so groggy is because your brain deflates and fills back up with blood and cleans out 
all of those neurotransmitters, those toxins. It's very important to go through those deep layers of sleep so you wake up refreshed. Not only is it the amount of sleep you need, but the quality of sleep. And if you're getting that blue light, then you're not getting healthy. There's some tricks. What me and my wife do is on our phones, we have a blue light filter. So when 7, 8 p.m. or so hits, our blue light filter turns on. So your phone looks a little bit more red, but none of that blue light hits your eyes. My glasses, actually, I had them specially built. It used to be expensive, but now it's pretty cheap. I have blue light filters built into my eyes. So during the day, it squeezes in through the sides, but when I'm using my cell phone or my computer screen, it's not actually coming through. So I have a double fail safe. If you wear glasses, or even if you don't wear glasses, get some UV ray protective glasses that you can wear inside the house while you watch TV. I have some links down below because that's an easy solution. But during the day, you wanna expose yourself to that natural blue light. Make sure you get outside even five, 10 minutes a day because that will lower your melatonin during the day, give you energy and shoot it back up at night and give you that energy back for when you wake up the next morning. Very, very important. The problem in society today, sleep deprivation is extremely high. Blue light from cell phones, from TVs is extremely high. People are trapped in buildings working where they don't see the sun. So that means if your melatonin does not decrease during the day, it doesn't rebound back up. It just kind of floats normal. So you're sleepy during the day, but not really falling asleep during the night. This is a dangerous trend that's only getting worse in society. Quick note before I get blown up in the comments. Sleep supplements are not the answer in most cases. Setting up your room, going to sleep on time, keeping a consistent schedule, and doing these top 15 hacks and tricks is what's really gonna help you sleep. Check out our 2023 and 2024 sleep guide linked below, as well as our top sleep positions. This is more important than taking medications. When we watch TV and we use phones, this isn't like 100 years ago. Our melatonin levels are low, so supplementing them will raise them and make you sleepy. We might need some help to get back to normal levels if we can't get back to acting the way we were intended to. Beauty is, in case you take way too much, the half-life is very low. The half-life of melatonin is like 30 to 50 minutes. I've even had people tell me they've taken like massive amounts, probably like 20 times what's recommended, 30 times what's recommended, even more, and they've had no problems. They just got really sleepy and fell asleep but there are side effects. You can get some nausea, some dizziness. You can get a lot of different stuff. In the last 20 years, melatonin use has been exploding and so have the studies, but there's still not a ton of long-term side effects reported. The worst are daytime drowsiness. So just take it 30 minutes before bed. The most common are headaches, nausea, upset stomach, some dizziness, mood changes. This can have reduced effectiveness over time, but there's no real proof that it has hormone changes or addiction properties. Can you overdose in melatonin? Well, it's not considered toxic. There's minimal to no real reported deaths, but that does not mean it's safe. The more you take, the more drowsiness, confusion, disrupted sleep. In extreme cases, activated charcoal might be needed to remove it from your stomach, but in most cases, due to the short half-life, you can just wait it out. What about long-term melatonin? Does it disrupt hormones? Theoretically, this has been claimed, but there's not much research showing it in the studies. If you can find some, please share it with me, but none really seems to show that definitively. What about dependence and tolerance? Some people report needing higher doses over time, and this is probably true, but again, not well-defined and not well-studied. What about rebound insomnia? Claim is that long-term use and discontinuation may cause short-term rebound insomnia insomnia. Again, not very well proven, not very well researched. It might be true, might not be. Daytime drowsiness, sometimes people have a hard time metabolizing certain medications, but the half-life is generally about 30 to 50 minutes for the average person, so it should get better by the time you wake up in the morning, unless you took a huge dose. A lot of the times, these studies have like 500 to 100 people. On these videos, we have hundreds of thousands of people watching. Let me know if this stuff helps or doesn't help. This really adds a lot to the knowledge in the video. I think we're really making big progress with a lot of the comments. I've had so many great comments on some of my sleep supplement videos. Specifically, one comment recently, one guy said he had sleep deprivation his whole life. 
until he took one of these supplements and it completely changed his life and he just started sleeping normally again. So I love hearing this feedback and whether we're on the right track or making mistakes or missing some type of new research, it really makes a big difference. So having four kids, this is an important topic for me. There are a lot of problems for kids. Some kids do not sleep, especially traveling on planes or car rides. Your kids really suffer. So does melatonin help in these cases? Well, I poured over all the research studies. I mean like 10, 15 plus at this point. And when kids have primary sleep disorders where they are outside the normal amount and they can't sleep and it feels like torture, melatonin is very effective. And no one's really saying anything too negative. But the thing is, all of them say more long term studies are needed and it's hard to test on kids. So there's no perfect answer. In general, if you check your kids weight and get the recommended gummies, you know, with other stuff in them too, you're usually pretty safe 99% of the time, according to the studies. Again, no studies really say anything negative, just that more details are needed. Studies that had children with autism that just could not sleep, that were always crying and keeping their parents away, there's no perfect solution, but these studies actually found that melatonin and some behavior training were actually the number one safest and beneficial solutions. So something to consider. Children's dosing. For infants, zero to 12 months, you wanna check with your pediatrician. Not always recommended. Start with extremely low doses. For toddlers, this is probably the most common use. You can see the crying baby right there. That's probably an infant more than a toddler, but you wanna use the tiny 0.5 milligram gummies or less. You always wanna check with your pediatrician for specific conditions and don't make it regular. And then for children, three to 12, this is most of my kids. You know, if they're having a hard time sleeping and you could see they're struggling, the term is called overtired or like on a plane or a trip, one milligram usually gets the trick done. Like, I mean, my kids pass out and I don't use this regularly. It's an every once in a while thing if they're really struggling. And all the studies we look at are short term only studies. Remember that. So the best evidence I could find for pregnancy and for breastfeeding is that there's no strong recommendations either way. There's not enough studies to prove it, not enough studies to disprove it. There's about 15 studies that tried to look at pregnancy and breastfeeding, but they don't really wanna say that it's safe and they don't wanna say that it's not safe. So probably legally, I should recommend that you not do it. They even have studies for dogs. So one to three milligrams, obviously a little dog, give them one milligram or less, about 30 minutes before bedtime. And this is for sleep disorders, anxiety, or canine Cushing's disease. This can lead to some drowsiness, diarrhea, upset stomach, allergies are very rare. But again, short term, don't use it every day to build dependency. The majority of our adult population drinks at least some alcohol. That's not good for your brain, your melatonin levels, or your liver. Well, guess what? There are studies showing that melatonin can counteract some of the negative effects in the brain and can help protect the liver from its oxidative damage potential. I'm not recommending a drink, but potentially melatonin can help if you do have to go out for a wedding or a party. Alcohol is proven to mess up your rapid eye movement sleep, which is essential towards good recovery, and it does suppress melatonin. But supplementing with melatonin 30 minutes before bedtime, about one to five milligram dose, can make a difference in improving some of that sleep. But alcohol is very unpredictable, so it's hard to predict exactly how well it's gonna work for the individual person. Melatonin can give you vivid dreams. It can give some people nightmares. When I take it, I personally have nice dreams. I like to think nice thoughts. I don't watch any horror movies before I go to bed. I follow the tips in my other video, my top 10 tips how to fall asleep without taking anything at all. So I highly recommend you watch that video before you take anything at all. Some people report that melatonin causes nightmares, but this is very hard to prove. Specifically, dreams and nightmares are very complex brain behaviors, but melatonin can get you closer into REM sleep or rapid eye movement. This does potentiate for more vivid dreams. So potentially try taking it earlier or later or a smaller dose. You can adjust with it, although this is not the most common thing. When I take it personally, I get some nice dreams. I don't really have nightmares. It helps me sleep. But generally, it's been found that melatonin is very safe. A meta-analysis published in the Journal of Sleep and Research found that melatonin reduced the amount of time it took to fall asleep. It increased the duration of deep sleep. So not only do you fall asleep faster, 
it's more efficient sleep. They found that it's relatively pretty safe, but every article always ends with more research is needed. How much melatonin should you take? The official recommendations are if you're having a hard time sleeping, 0.5 milligrams to 3 milligrams is often the average recommended amount, especially if you're flying, if you have jet lag, if you have a hard time sleeping. A lot of chronic pain patients I know take in the five to 10 milligram range, about half an hour before going to sleep. Obviously, if it's chewable tab, it gets near your system quicker. Not everybody's the same. Some people could be more sensitive. Always officially consult with a doctor if you have a problem or it messes up your heart rate or anything. There are three dosage ranges. Low doses are about one to three milligrams for a smaller person. At medium doses, like three to five milligrams. As I mentioned, some of my chronic pain patients, harder sleepers, might need like 10 milligrams. Studies do show that it takes about 30 to 60 minutes to work. And if you do need to use it continuously, it can help regulate your sleep cycle. If, for example, you have chronic insomnia or something. Generally, half-life is about 20 to 50 minutes officially. Then it leaves your body fairly quickly. How much is too much? You know what? I've seen studies where patients with dementia take like 60 milligrams or more for years without any real side effects. And this is different than like, say, a man taking steroids. It doesn't stop your body from producing it. They've done studies where people take large amounts for a long period of time, and the day you stop, it kind of goes back to normal. Always check with your doctor, keep up on the studies in case something new. Don't go crazy with mega doses. That's not beneficial in any way. It's just gonna give you side effects like dizziness, headache, nausea, daytime drowsiness if you take it too early. It's hard to study any medications, and everybody's different. It's hard to know for sure. While it's safe for me, and most of the patients that have taken it and discussed it with me, you could be the unicorn, you could be different. You know, take it 30 minutes before bed, don't go crazy. And can you give it to kids? Generally, kids, it's okay, but very, very low dosages. Don't make it a regular thing. Don't make your kids rely on it. And really, I have a lot of great videos. Best sleep positions, best sleep tricks, and if you wanna fall asleep without taking drugs, I have a one minute tip that you need to watch. Check that video down below.